It's great to be here with you, um, Turtle, this evening and, you know, at this wonderful Enrama Festival. And I suppose just to say out there to all our listeners um, of Community Radio Yall, I'm here with Turtle Bombray, and, um, who is at this great festival here in Lismore. And, you know, I'm, I've been fascinated about what you've been doing for a very long time. So it's a real pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you very much. It's lovely to in, be in here. In the flesh, as they say, with, with me talking here. And I suppose looking at the, so the various areas of your work and, you know, um, the Vanishing Ireland, which I found was incredible. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just to talk about that, you might, you might just talk about that and explain to us what, what, what you were doing with that. Right. Uh, well, the Vanishing Ireland project began an astonishing 16 years ago now. Right. Um, when myself and... Uh, a very old friend of mine, James Fennell, who um, was a friend of mine since we were kids, who's a great photographer, um, he and I began crisscrossing all over Ireland, just interviewing people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, hundreds. Okay. Uh, the oldest was 108. Um, and just interviewing them about the old ways and the old days and yes. who they were and, and also about who their families were, where they came from. If you're trying to, I'm a historian, so I was trying to get back and find out, um, you know, what memories they'd remembered of their parents, grandparents' stories, and so on. Yeah, no, it seemed <clears> absolutely <throat> super, and I think there was one gentleman. Where there's two people particularly, and I suppose. You know, I'm reading through this, and I think it was a man called Paddy Gleeson. Oh yes, okay, Paddy Gleeson from County Clare. Yeah. Who ended up being the oldest man in Ireland okay. uh, at the time of his at yeah. the time of his death it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he is over in County Clare, I can't remember where exactly, oh, Callaghan's Mills. Callaghan's Mills. And I remember he was one of the younger children in the family, and the rest of them, including his father, his mother died when he was young. Right. And his father decided to move to New York and shot off over to New York yes. and left him behind. And he yes. stayed with an aunt. He never saw his father again. Yes. Caught up with his brothers in the 1960s. Yeah. Um, and uh, lived to be 105, I think. How amazing. Attributed it to 20 major a day. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair In enough. early days. Fair enough. No, and it was, I suppose, what got me really, I think there was a Bridget Aspel as well, there was, there was people that I sort of read, sort of, that suddenly came alive by what you had created in that. And I think what I, you know, about your work, and you might talk to us about that, that in a sense, looking at your work, it's the people's perspective that you take. Would that be true? Definitely. I think it's, I, as a historian, I think you've got a duty not to bore people to death. And that right. can be very easily done if it's just dates, dates, dates and names and so yes. on. And uh, conversely, if you can create it, make it about people that people, other people can relate to, sure. uh, that's huge. And you know, certainly with something like the Vanishing Ireland Project, it's amazing how much support you would get from the families themselves who yes. are amazed to have their um, grandmother or granny or great aunt or great uncle yes. or whatever interviewed. Uh, that they would just, you know, get a, a great involvement from from the younger generations, but it is, yeah, it's got to be about the people. It's the people's perspective. Yeah. And always, I lived with my grandfather when I was uh, young for a period. Okay. And I was always trying to imagine what he was doing when he was my age, you know. And so when he was my age, you know, maybe he was my age when Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany or something like that. Yes. So it's always yes. trying to put it in that perspective. Okay, and because that comes really, really strongly through your work. Yeah. I mean, a glorious madness. Right, yeah. It, it equally, that, that whole experience of the Western Front and your yeah. own personal experience with that. Uh, was it with, with Alan, Alan Drew? Alan oh, well, yeah, Alan, Alan Appleby Drew, yeah, my father's uh, great uncle who uh, I brush my hair with his hairbrush, which is uh, quite an obscure thing. Which is interesting. Um, because, uh, yes, so I've got to know him quite well in the last few years, even though he yeah. was killed in action over 100 yes. year, 101 years ago. Yes. But uh, yeah, so he was um, a, you know, a, a great, great uncle of mine, but uh, was went off to the Western Front and got killed quite quickly. But he was yeah. a good, entertaining character before that. Loved his music, loved his rugby and all that stuff. Yes. So, um, so I think uh, having gone over to the Western Front and we tracked down his, his um, grave, and uh, there's a little visitor's book there. I'm afraid I rather inanely wrote, thank you for the hairbrush, Alan. Right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Very I think of him every time when I, when yeah. I brush my hair. But it, it, yeah. brought it, it brought it to life. Yeah, I mean, as, 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 I mean how, how wonderful. Um, you know, the, the, the realness of that, I suppose. You know, the sense of where the connections are made. And is, what inspires you as an historian in that respect? What's, what's the influences there? I think it is trying to connect with... with the people from the past to an extent. It is trying to 
um, bring their stories to life. You know, if I can return to the Western Front, we yes. were standing with a friend of mine uh, in a graveyard and I was talking about the, the power of modern technology and Google and all the rest of it. I said, look at this, here's a gravestone we have here. There's two people are buried in this one gravestone. Why is that? You know, we can't find out from yeah. normally. Sure. I go online and look it up and we discover that it was uh, a pilot and his navigator, part one, that's why they're in the same um, grave. And then part two, that the navigator had been the pilot's best man before the war, vice versa. They've been each other's best men. Okay. And suddenly this white grave, which is one of many millions or thousands of graves you know, around yeah. us, yeah. suddenly becomes a story in yes. itself. And yes. I think that's sort of a roundabout way of what, it's, what it is for me. I just oh, think there okay. are amazing stories lurking everywhere. Okay, so, so it's to take the individual story mm. among those thousands of graves and to sort of draw that out and to create the person to, you know, to, to take away a, just the persona of a soldier or just a label or whatever mm. and to create a person yes. and bring them alive to people. And to bring them alive to people, exactly. And I think it's, in, in a way, it's the same with the Vanishing Ireland project. People yeah. will say, oh, you know, Granny's never done anything interesting in her life. Yes. And that's baloney. You go and talk to Granny. She's had an amazing life, you know, and, yeah. but, you know, maybe it's, you try and distill it into a, a short chapter. But, sure, uh, sure. You know, I... Sure. I think that's what can set you apart and was so interests me and you know, talking to you here right. was that sort of people perspective as I said and being able to sort of create that sense of people so it was like reading um uh, be it the Glorious Madison or Vanishing Ireland or any of those where you sort of felt, gosh, you know, I, I think I, I can I can resonate with these people. Right. So that's a, a wonderful well, thing to be able to do. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you came, and that's amazingly flattering to hear. I, I, um, I think it's also that history is not so long as uh, it's not that long ago. Um, Dame Edna, yes, who we all know, Did. is I think 82 or 83 years old at the moment. Mm. And if you go back 82 or 83 years ago, you're in 1932 or 33, maybe. Give or take, yeah. Um, that's one Dame Edna. Two day madness brings you back to the 1850s. Yeah. Okay. Three day madness brings you to the 1770s, um, and four day madness, and you are just after the Battle of the Boyne. You know, history is really very recent, and that's definitely something that came through a lot during the Vanishing Ireland project. Yes. Interviewing these people who quite often their parents, or sorry, grandparents were children, if not teenagers, at the time of the famine, for instance. Sure. So, Sure. You know, it's incredible. It, it, it is incredible, and I suppose, albeit that the famine, albeit just 170 years ago, you mm. know, when we talk about that. What I'm interested in the sense, okay, and I, I'm sure, you know, I, we were talking a minute about what you'll be talking about here in, in, in Lismore, which is very important. Mm. But, um, you know, that whole sense for you, do you see history as something that you want to connect people to so that we can learn from that and bring what learning there is into the present moment is that something that yeah I think it is and I think it's about identity about incre okay. enhancing people's sense of identity whether it's as an individual person knowing what your own family did or knowing yes. what the history is around you and obviously here in Lismore you know yeah. you can't move for history there's sure. extraordinary stuff everywhere but you know there are other places where people think that they haven't got any history and yet they're tripping up over a ring fort or a ruin of an abbey or whatever yes um, and I do think that yeah I think it can and you know Obviously, having a, a sharper sense of your identity is a good thing. Yes. Uh, and it is, you are created by your geography, even if you don't realise it. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, and we all have that, and we all have that story. But mm. I think in, in historians, and maybe historians like yourself, bring that alive in a very, very real way. And, you know, we're, we're always very grateful to have people like you who are doing that. Okay. Now, you're, you're here in, Lis, in Lismore at this wonderful Rama Festival, which, of course, is the wonderful Gaelic for journey. And, you know, in Rama, and in that sense, it's on a journey. So are you going to take people on a journey tomorrow in your literary breakfast? I think I'm going to take people on a journey that I'm, I'm, I hope it's not too familiar for them, but I'm going to kayak them up the uh, Blackwater River itself. But I have uh, okay. uh, various stories uh, along the river from Ballinatray up to Lismore that um, right. I'm going to try and intersperse. And it's going to bring people uh, from here to... Uh, Zulu land and from here to Virginia and from here to various other places okay. uh, around the world okay. um, and uh, it should be quite a I don't know hopefully it's what people are expecting for a breakfast talk I'm looking forward to it yeah absolutely so you're going to take the local and the global and bring it all together I'm going more. to endeavour to do that uh, all from uh, a sort of loosely uh, kayaking uh, perspective 
Fantastic. And tell me, just going forward, I mean, you have you another book coming there I do, yes. Soon? I've yeah. just, I'm delighted to say I've just um, finished proofreading my new book, which is called 1847, uh, A Chronicle of Genius, Generosity and Savagery. Right, okay. Um, and it is a, a history of, kind of a history of the world in 1847. Yes. There's 44 stories from all around the world. Um, about a third to a half of them are Irish or Irish connections, but a lot of them don't. They're about Comanches and yeah. the French bombing Vietnam and yeah. Arctic explorers and all that sort of stuff. Just to, okay. um, So we look very much forward to reading that. I, I know I certainly do anyway. Thank you, Bernadette. And having work. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me um, here today. And uh, we look forward, and I'm sure all the listeners and community radio you all, um, it's Bernadette Phillips, and I've been talking to the wonderful historian, writer, author, um, um, Turtle Bunbury, here in Lismore. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you so much.